Welcome back to Sports Overtime. Brock Gutierrez joining me at the touchscreen to preview Central Michigan's conference opener against Western tomorrow. Brock, thanks for joining us. I am glad to be back. Always excited to talk about Chippewa football. As a former Chippewa, what is this week like for a player? It's, it's a lot of emotion, okay, and especially coming off the, the, the non-conference schedule that they've had, it's, it's unfortunate they're playing this early because you've had to keep your emotions up and now you're going to take it to, the, to another level. So all week long they preach to you about the hatred between these two teams, about how, you know, Western Michigan, they've been playing this rivalry since 1907. So they've been playing this rivalry for a long time. They missed a few years in between there, but uh, there was a long string of games where Western beat up on Central. Central was Division II team for a long time, but since 1975, Central holds a 26-14-1 edge against the Broncos. So, uh, you know, they kind of instill that, you know, these guys wouldn't play you for a long period of time. You were too small. You were no good, all that. That's what they told me when I was a freshman. I learned that over the years. And just uh, a general overall hatred for the team that's coming in uh, to Kelly Shorts on Saturday. Talked about being 26 and 14 since they became a D1 school. Yep. John Bonamigo's in his second year as head coach. He's 0 1 after losing by two points last and year. And I don't think he lost as a player. I think he might, in that time frame, Central had a pretty good edge against him. I don't, I'm not 100% I, I'm not 100 sure on that, but I don't think he lost. I know it's killing him. I know it's eating him up inside. I know that he's talked to a lot. And he's got a lot of friends, obviously, that played at Central. And I'm sure they've all talked to him about that. You've got to beat Western. So I, I know for a fact it's been a, it's been a huge onus this week at practice. And I'm sure there's been a lot of highlights from last year's game played and, and things of that nature. So these guys are going to be ready to play. And they're back home at Kelly Shorts. And it's going to be a loud, uh, obnoxious crowd. I'm a little worried about the 7 o'clock start. Uh, it's going to be a little bit wild. But uh, it should be a great atmosphere for football, even though it might be a chance of rain. We talked to Cooper Rush and we talked to John Bonamigo earlier this week. And Cooper said that they are a second half team. They were a second half team last year yes, against Western. Going against MAC opponents, heading into some tougher games, how is that going to translate? Well, the problem with being a second half team is it's a, it's a good thing, obviously, but as, what, as you saw what happened last week against Virginia, you can't spot a team 28 points. I mean, that's just a, that's a huge uh, deficit to put yourself into. I will say one thing, though, about this team. Anytime Cooper Rush has got the ball in his hands, I don't care what the situation is, what the down and distance is, you always think that there's a chance that you're going to convert or, or take it to the house. So that's a huge help. But you can't let a Western Michigan. And Western's better than Virginia, I think, uh, across the board. Uh, maybe not defensively, but, but overall I think they're a better football team. And Central just let that team get out to too big of a lead and couldn't overcome it. Now they did come back and tie it, but they just couldn't finish it at the end. So... Yes, when you get into Mid-American Conference play, most of the teams aren't that good. So you can come back from a big deficit and be okay. But you can't let Western get 28 points against you. It's going to be a real long day. They lost a couple players last week. Mm -hmm. Jesse Kroll is yes. gone. No more for the season. So Brandon Childress, a Baldwin graduate that a couple of our viewers, Absolutely. I'm sure, miss seeing play on Friday night. How can he contribute to a team being such a young player going into a week like Western. Well, you know, it's interesting, and I always say this when people say, uh, one thing that Central has is depth. And they've had, this year at wide receiver, they have a lot of depth. Um, does it hurt to have Jesse Kroll out? Yes, it absolutely hurts, because he's got, he's got great hands, and he runs great, precise routes. He's a clutch receiver on third down. But he's not the fastest guy in the world, so Brandon Childers brings a, a quite a bit more speed to the equation. Uh, you know, and they were able to redshirt him last year because of that depth, so he's got a year of practicing under his belt, he's going to have a lot of years in front of him. You know, Jesse Kroll was the first time starter at one point too, okay? Dan Lefevre, I always tell that story, you know, when Brian Brunner went down and Dan Lefevre had to go in and play, what are we going to do now? Our starting quarterback's down. Well, that one turned out all right too. So I, it's, it's a chance for a young guy to step up and prove his worth, and we'll get to know Brandon Childress a little bit sooner than maybe we would have, and I think we're going to be very, very pleased with what he can do. He's a dynamic player, and I think he's going to have a great career at Central. Hopefully we'll see Brandon Childress tomorrow. Central Michigan hosts Western at 7 p.m. We'll have game highlights and post-game reaction. I know you'll be there. We'll have all that tomorrow on oh. 9 and 10 News at 11 Saturday. Fire up chips.